and welcome back to Sew On If I Sew, or welcome if you're new. My name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And today I am so excited to be sharing with you my graduation outfit, yay! So it's hanging behind me, we'll talk about it more in a minute. Um, but the purpose of this video is to talk you through a bit of the making process. I made it mostly across two days, um, last weekend I want to say. I think it was last weekend, oh, time blows. Um, but I'm really proud of it and I can't wait to talk more about it. So this video where I've got some clips from while I was making it. And then I'm gonna talk about what I've made, the way I've made it, changes, cause I've made this garment before. So changes, uh, adaptations, adjustments, and how I'm feeling now. So grab a cup of tea and let's get going. And to start with, we are going to watch some clips from me making it. I should say that my graduation outfit is the Vogue, let me get the numbers right, 9075 jumpsuit, which I have made previously and I have linked below in the comments. Um, I made it in a crept sheen, I think this is crept sheen, um, with a lace over the top. This is from my local fabric shop. It looks red in the camera. It's actually a, like quite a deep burgundy um which is gorgeous and yeah it was an interesting one to make so check out some of the clips and then we shall reconvene to talk a little bit more about the making process so um as i mentioned this isn't a full sew along but i am aiming to do little um sort of catch-ups throughout the process um to really show you what it was like this time because last time i got the pattern in the post and four hours later i had the garment i really didn't stop to do anything else um so here we are on the floor with the pattern pieces um one of the biggest decisions i've made so far is that i need to make a size 10. so last time i made a size 14 because that was my garment measurements based on the pattern envelope over there however um as i learned last time when i ended up taking four inches out of the back uh, the finished garment measurements are on the Vogue pattern pieces. So looking at the finished garment measurements, um, I'm going to make a size 10, which makes much more sense. Luckily, because I'd cut out the 14 last time, all the lines for the 10 are intact. So I don't need to do anything else. So that should be fine. Um, but I'm really excited to get cutting out. So I'm going to adjust the pattern pieces now and then cut out my pieces and then I might show you where I'm at after then. So uh, see you shortly. So a little update, uh, because I got so caught up in the process of making that I kind of forgot to talk to you guys. So next to me, we have the under jumpsuit, which is done, except for the zip, because both of the parts need to be together for zip. So it's got like a strapless top. I don't know if that's visible, let me see if I can, oh, sorry, I'm covered in lace, there we go. If I stand up. So it's it's like that, sort of quite a low strapless top, but that's okay because it'll have something else in it. I'm going to take you through here so I can see what I'm showing you. Um, and then the trousers are sort of midi length, which is quite nice. I left the pockets off because I didn't want to ruin the line of the fabric. This fabric is very light. The last fabric I used was very like patterned, so it disguised the pockets, but I just wanted a sort of elegant flow for this. Um, so no pockets this time. I'm a big fan though, so far. It does sit quite low and it is going to be quite tight. I may have accidentally taken too much off at the waist, but that is okay. Um, but on the inside, I did a fun sort of quasi um, boning technique where I actually sewed strips of thick uh, bias tape. I had some really like solid bias tape that I sewed in strips. So on the inside lined version, there's like, there's just a bit of structure and it's along the top as well. So I'm hoping that'll just give it a bit more shape and help it stay up really. Um, which it should do because the top's about to get stitched over. So we have half a top currently. I've been using the baking paper method of sewing lace. So here we are with a, a sleeve and a top. But if I put it over me here, it doesn't work super well over a pink jumper, but as you can see, it sort of hits my waist. So hopefully that will, the dress will come quite low, lace top, three quarter length sleeves. I've used the scallop lace edge of the hem um, for the middle and for the sleeves as well. I don't know if you can see that, but it is the same on the sleeves. This lace is beautiful to work with. It is so dark sewing at the moment. So I started this over the weekend 
and there was a massive massive rainstorm like we had hailstones the size of like actual pebbles they were like this um but it was really really dark in the house so i have this is the setup i was using except with an extended sewing machine table so i've got my lovely series light um and my sewing machine fully lit up which when you're working with when you're working with quite delicate fabrics it's just great like if i hold that up in the light you can see how much more you can see than if i'm like over here and that was the thing like there isn't much light in my sewing room so it's been an absolute godsend to have um a decent daylight lamp um so i'm aiming to finish tonight so i'm gonna put the sleeves on on the other side and obviously the back because this side needs a back um and then i'm going to very gently attach it to the dress i don't know how yet but i think i think i'm just gonna have to stitch in the ditch honestly i think i think that's where we are um but i'm gonna pin it on and then try it on and make sure it fits in terms of the height and all that kind of stuff we'll stitch it on then we will baste the two layers of the back of the bodice which i've already done for these two and then I'll base the lace on top at the same seam allowance. We're only going half the recommended seam allowance because I don't have much. Um, and then we'll put the invisible zip in and then I need to hem the trousers. But once we put the invisible zip in, then we're gonna pour ourselves a glass of wine <laughs> because that is literally like, do you know how many times sewing this I've caught myself holding my breath? This is like my first time ever sewing with evening wear fabrics and I'm, I'm really enjoying it actually. It's really fun, but it's, it's really nerve-wracking. <laughs> so I'll catch up with you guys when I'm finished. So here it is. I'm gonna do a little try-on of it in a second, but just some details for you. Um, it is 99.999% done. Um, the only thing is I am gonna make this neckline into a boat neck, but what I want to do is take a minute for it to sort of settle. And I don't wanna cut into it just yet. I want to think about what I want, how much of a boat neck I want, um, and the angle of it, but I don't want to cut into it just yet. So that's the only thing I would say, and you'll see a bit more in the try-on vlog, but, um, sorry, the try-on element of the vlog, but that's the only thing that will change. Otherwise, we are there, and it's beautiful. So, some changes I have made. Last time I made this, I made a size 14, because that is what my measurements indicated, uh, as I spoke about a little bit in the video. This is a size 10. It is a bit neat, but fine. Like it, it's fine. It's better, much, much better, and much more comfortable than the 14. I feel better in it, it's gorgeous. Um, the more astute amongst you will notice the underneath bodice is strapless. That is my own pattern hack, really. Um, so the top, this, this element of it, so sleeves, the top section, that is all taken from the pattern so what i did is i cut out a lace version of the bodice only for clarity there isn't actually a top version in the pattern i just used the bodice and then i added a bit to the bottom so i could use the scallop hem as a raw hem and i did the same on the sleeves um and then underneath i basically just hacked the bodice pieces roughly with where a strapless line would be added an inch and then if i open it and show you i the other thing I used to do is have a little look at the zip at the back because I need to finish it at the top somehow and I'm not sure how but again that will depend what I do to make it a boat neck as well so the joys of an invisible zip through lace honestly like this is going to wear off quickly but I love it so if I open it up for you on the inside you can see it is it's a fully lined bodice I didn't line the trousers I didn't need to um it's sort of semi-boned I don't know if that's clear. Yeah, there we go. You can see the tracks. Um, I didn't use boning. I just used, I have an incredibly stiff bias binding I have for making bunting. And actually that's sewn in the inside. It doesn't matter that it's bright blue because you can't see it. It's completely opaque fabric. So there is a layer of bodice, another layer of bodice. They're sewn on top of each other. And there is reinforcement down every seam. And then there is a strip of it along the top as well. And then what I did to stick them together is basically I made the trousers, I stuck this bodice on top, and then I overlaid the lace bodice and I stitched down the princess seams. So those seams there, 
and the side seams just so it would stay up basically um, because it's got to be done um and actually i really like the effect that's given the princess seam strapless bodice is is a nice look it's nice and smooth um and that's actually worked surprisingly well surprisingly well again there's no strapless hack in the pattern i very much sort of just drew it on with a pencil um so it went well for a first go i've learned a little bit about sort of remembering that whilst it looks like a straight line here because it's a princess seam you need to be a bit more like that to provide enough bust coverage but because there is a top over the top it doesn't actually matter massively um and then the trousers are just a layer of crepe i will show them to you in a second once i've got the zip back on the inside i desperately once i'm happy with the closure on this i need to go back through and overlock the um zip and the raw seam because it is fraying like anything. So here we have lovely pleats at the front. I took the pockets out because they were too bulky with the more sort of evening dress line. Um, and frankly, I would rather, I have one with pockets in it. I now have one without, which means for every eventuality, I am sorted. So I'm going to try it on now, put the camera further away so you can see what it looks like. But here we are, as always, it's really hard to get a full body shot. But hopefully this demonstrates. So we have trousers, because that's the number one question is, is it a dress or trousers? I have huge trousers, but it hangs like a dress, which is nice. Um, it is a very much more nipped in waist. So the size 10 fits, but I won't be eating anything, put it that way. Um, at the back, the zip is pretty good. It's quite tight, but it's fine. Um, the only thing I would say is the invisible zip all the way up to the top is quite hard to do. So I might actually stop the zip around there and then do a different fastening. I haven't decided. We'll leave that with me. My graduation is in February, so I have time to make these little adjustments, but I wanted to leave it to sort of hang on its own and then see how I felt. But I don't want to, like, I don't know, sometimes with expensive evening wear fabrics or big projects, you're as best to leave it until the dust has settled and then make some decisions. But I love it. So like, the sleeves are really nice length. I lengthened the sleeves. So the pattern sleeves went about there. So I added, I think it's about two inches I added. You can see the line of the bodice I actually quite like because it's a sort of sheer element here. It's quite nice having it slightly lower. But for reference, my bust apex is there and the top of the dress is like there. But I have a skin colour bra actually that you can't really see through it, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, but I really like the shape. I love how big my trousers are, I'm very floaty. It's lovely and practical. Um, I'll take some proper photos. I'm really struggling for light at the moment, as in natural daylight. While making this, I mentioned it in the vlog, but honestly, like my serious readers, my daylight lamp it's an absolute lifesaver because the day i did most of the sewing was a full rainstorm and it was it was just so dark in the house it would have been so challenging for like my eyes otherwise honestly um but yeah like in terms of photography light i'm going to try and get some photos tonight with all of my lights and uh, my ring light and everything as well so if i can get some decent photos but if not it might wait until i don't know I can't really get it in my bag for Colchester and take photos there, that seems a bit off. Uh, so we're going to see Adam's family um, this weekend. So when you see this video, I will be away um, because of Adam's birthday last weekend and we're going to fireworks, which is my favourite holiday of the year. Um, although I should caveat that with, I know lots of people hate fireworks for dogs. Um, I grew up with dogs, I know it's a nightmare. I personally, I adore one fire night and I love New Year's. Um, and I know obviously fireworks are really important, but Diwali as well, but I don't think you should be able to buy fireworks at different times because it's just not fair on pets and everything. Like it, it's, you know, it's a lot. But personally, I love Bonfire Night. It's my favorite holiday. I just love, I love this time of year to be honest. It's all uh, autumnal and beautiful and I love it. Anyway, back to the garment. So in terms of the fabrics, the crepe machine's a really nice weight for this. It holds the pleats without being too boxy. And as you can see when I move, there's a good amount of like flow to my trousers, um, which is really nice and will look good in photos and things. 
does give me the smallest waist in the world, which I'm quite chuffed with. I feel like a Disney princess. Um, but you know, also it's, it's definitely, it's a little bit neat, but not so much as I care. Like it's fine. Um, and I feel really good at it, which is what matters to be honest. Um, the lace was really interesting to work with. So I did the baking paper or tracing paper technique where sometimes it stitched absolutely fine when I was doing the seams and sometimes the machine just kept eating the lace so I put a layer of baking paper underneath stitched it along and then tore off like perforations afterwards and that really helped just get it through the machine stop the feed dogs um catching on because it's quite big lace if I show you like it's big and it's quite textured so um there were moments where it was slightly challenging to sew um but yeah that really helped so that's a good tip if you are attempting something of this ilk this project was such a whirlwind to do i i've loved every minute of it but i bought this fabric last year and it has taken me a year to cut into it like it's it's been so what's the word it has been nerve-wracking because it's some of the most expensive fabric I've personally ever bought. It's not actually that expensive in terms of fabric, but for me, it was an investment and it was making something special. This is my first, I've, I've done dribs and drabs of evening wear, but this is probably the first proper bit of evening wear I've ever made with like difficult fiddly bits. And it's the first time working with lace and you know, all that kind of stuff. So it feels like a really big moment, which is, is really fun. It's really nice, but it was really nerve wracking. Um, but then as I spoke about last week, one day I just woke up and said, I want to make this today. And, and that was it. I, I spent around eight hours sewing. I did probably three quarters of it. And then the day afterwards, I attached the lace top to the bodice and I put the zip in. Um, but I did like the whole strapless bodice, everything from right the way through from cutting it out all the way up to having a whole strapless jumpsuit was done in a day and that actually felt really good as well it was really nice to just sew and get really in the zone and there are no distractions i just cracked away i had like seven rom-coms back to back loved it it was really fun um and i feel really good for making it um and i'm i have mentioned it a couple of times and i should for transparency as always say that i am an ambassador for series lights uh this my light here was gifted but I cannot explain how useful it was. Um, this was a really fiddly project. And even if I put my arm under now, you see the difference in detail for the lace and it was invaluable, particularly when I was sewing down these princess seams, I had my light angled right over my sewing machine so I could see exactly what I was doing. I really needed it. Um, these lights use daylight wavelength technology they're made in the UK which I love they're actually local to me which is exciting um and yeah it is it's a phenomenal piece of kit like I cannot explain now it's getting darker now that like it's it's so dark now for me either morning and night but also just the lower sun there's trees at that window so I really don't get much light in here and it has made an insane amount of difference to me um, I do have a collaboration with Serious Readers um, below, so there is a little affiliate link where you do get a discount if you would like to pursue that, you are more than welcome to. There are a range of lights, this is one of the more expensive ones, but they do have more entry level options as well. Um, I honestly, I cannot explain how much this has helped my eyesight as well while, while doing this project, because that was part of it, I was like, I just wasn't prepared to sort of spend hours neck craning over a sewing machine like it was so much more painless than I thought it would be um but yeah my life was massively instrumental in doing that so would recommend checking one out um so what have I learned from this project I have learnt that <sighs> lace can be frustrating but it is worth the effort that's that's sort of number one thing uh, number two is if you're going to do a strapless bodice without one of these, twirl it. Uh, just, you know, make it up on the spot's fine, but probably check it first. Um, it's worked out well this time, but God knows what would have happened if it hadn't. Um, so useful bit of advice. Also, I think my final thing I've learned from this is if you want to do something, just do it. Sometimes with sewing, 
there can feel pressure to be making at a consistent rate, particularly things like Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and all sorts of stuff. Make it seem like you should be making things weekly all the time. Go, go, go. That's not how sewing works. This fabric has been in my stash for a year. And then last weekend or the weekend before, two weeks ago, I don't even know. Two, I, I feel like it was two weekends ago. We had a huge rainstorm. No, it must have been because we were away last weekend. Um, and I literally woke up and just went, I just want to do it. And following, feeling that inspiration and just following it and going, yes, I just want to do this. It's so fun. Let's do it. It was much more enjoyable than going, oh, I should probably sew, shouldn't I? It's a hobby. Do it when you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, don't. Have a bath, have a cup of tea, go and read, do something else. But don't ever feel like you have to sew. So that is all from me and my lovely graduation outfit. I'm going to go take some photos now. But thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for following on with this journey. I've been talking about it forever. Um, and also, I've just remembered, <laughs> this is also one of my Make 9. So another Make 9 crossed off the list, which feels fabulous. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And I will see you next time.